Good evening. I am the Reverend Nikki Mathis, rector here at St. Gregory, Gregory the Great Episcopal Church here in Athens, Georgia. We are so glad to have you with us for worship at this evening's service. And I know this is a change for many of you being with us in the evening rather than in the morning, but our church has now started having in-person worship services. And so in order to be present with those who are worshiping in the morning, we are now doing evening services so that I can also be present in the chat, in the live chat, if you are with us in the premiere, with those who attend this service as well. But please know you can watch this at any time after the premiere and worship with us at any time. But if you live in town and, and are able and, and want to do so, please find our registration on our website, on our Facebook page, and if you receive our little weekly mailings, also in the email, the email newsletter that comes to you, and it will explain how to register for in-person services here at St. Gregory the Great. We want to welcome all of those who are our home folks, our parishioners out there at home. We want to welcome all those who are visitors, just, just visiting with us for the first or second time. We are so glad to have you. And welcome to all of those who are looking for a church home. Welcome home. So before we begin worship, there are just a few announcements. One is that we have spiritual communion, and that is simply something that exists, has existed in the church for centuries where those who could not be present at a church service could still receive the benefits of communion by worshiping at the same time of the Eucharist and praying that prayer. So for you at home, you can be watching this at any time and pray any one of these three prayers and receive the benefits of communion. That means renewal and forgiveness of sins and Christ's presence, even though you are not able to physically take communion with us. Also, for those of you who wish to give during this time, or it's your habit to give during the offertory at service, you can still do that online. Again, that can be done at our website at stgregoryathens.org. That is stgregoryathens.org. Or if you're a parish member and have the Realm app on any of your devices, you can give that way as well. And if you're not able to give during the economic downturn or because of where you are spiritually right now and, and this, these confusing and violent and sometimes maddening times, that's okay too because God loves us from the top of our head to the tips of our toes, whether we can give or cannot give. With that said, it is time to begin worship. So welcome to worship here at St. Gregory the Great. Welcome home. <laughs>
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is risen is indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Son Jesus is the good shepherd of your people. Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 4. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. Then Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along bright pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from the book of 1 John, chapter 3. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God. And we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he, that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to, you, to you, O Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, 
because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, you, to you, O Christ. I think sheep are cute, cute enough especially if I'm driving in my car or watching the animal channel in my living room. But thinking of myself as a sheep has never been a comfortable fit for me. In the end, they are going to be sheared, sold, or supper. And none of those things sound like anything I would enjoy being. And also, to be entirely honest, anthropomorphic animals have always creeped me out just a little. And sometimes when I hear Jesus describing himself as a shepherd and those he loves as sheep, I start imagining weird things. Something maybe that looks like a where sheep? Sitting in church, walking upright on two legs, saying things in Southern like, yet? and ah, oh, bless his heart in between a ba here or there. Now, the weirdness of that image aside, there is still something to be said for the notion of hybrids. We, on this very day, are becoming a hybrid congregation. Some of us in one place, some in another, and Jesus addresses that very circumstance. It's right there in the gospel story, Jesus saying, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. One shepherd, many flocks, one family. Now in the past, I've always taken the phrase other sheep to mean multiple things, most of them existing at a comfortable distance from myself, such as other people who are severely othered, those in high stress inducing and life threatening poverty, those grieving personally the murder of their own loved ones at the hands of those bigoted against certain races or genders or sexual orientations, or, and even those who call God by another name in other religions and yet live in love and great faithfulness. But in this past year, while the pandemic has raged and awareness of racial violence has been somewhat centered and the psychosocial emotional damage done by long-term social isolation is rearing its head, well now, that same phrase that Jesus said hits me differently. I have other sheep who are not in this fold. That phrase is even more personal now because some of us worshiping together as a family in St. Gregory the Great are now identified as persons in other flocks. Somehow, even with many flocks, we still have one shepherd and therefore are all one family. What I mean is this, as joyful as it is to be with those folks who could be present in the building today, and there is great joy afforded those of us able to do that, myself included, finally being able to see those we love face to face. Oh, be still my beating heart. I love y'all so much. But we also, in entering the building, might feel more keenly all that was lost for a year and is still lost in what we can and cannot do yet in this building. Like sing or pass the peace or walk up to the altar for communion, we might still feel alienated or otherwise estranged, maybe struggling to remember what it felt like before to be here. And then there are those who cannot yet come, those of you at home with kids who love our children's church and nursery, which has to remain closed for the time being, those with more severe immune depressive dis immunodepressive disorders, and those who also understandably just don't feel comfortable gathering yet. 
We are all St. Gregory's, all of us. But even within it, as I've just described, we are also in other flocks. Flocks of the joyful, flocks of the grieving, flocks of the cautious, flocks of the ticked off. All of it natural and okay. Many flocks under one shepherd in one family. And please know that I and the staff are trying to work on ways to address coming together in person and online in special liturgies and in simple support groups, the addressing of all those celebrations and discomforts floating around the room here and at home, because that's what God's family does. Name aloud in honesty and spiritual maturity the ghosts and the elephants and the happy circumstances in the room so that we can adjust to the newness of rebuilding what once was without losing the good that now is. Yes, as hard as this year was, there was some good in it. That's why the online service is now at 6 p.m. so that I can be present here and present in the chat online because for many who worship with us online, the chat is a part of their worship, having a, peace, a priest presence, and it is good. We have new members received since the pandemic who don't live in town or even in this state who can now attend our services via the World Wide Web, and that is good. We have discovered the stellar musical talent we have been blessed with here at St. Gregory the Great, and that it is now spread to a wider audience. More people know the choir, more people know our choir director, more people know our organist and the fantastic talent he has in making media that expresses our love of music. And that is good. It's good that we have learned that as a family under Jesus, our Good Shepherd, we can be creative and unified under ridiculously hard circumstances. It's good. Now, that ability, that power to help us unite in patience and in honesty and prayer is one of the reasons I believe that Jesus said he is the good shepherd rather than the good king, even though he is one, rather than the good politician in positions such as Herod or Pilate or a governor or a congressperson or the good entertainer. Remember, as a preacher and healer, he was drawing Beyonce-sized crowds before there was a Beyonce. Instead, he named a job, a position that was familiar to the people he was speaking to, a common everyday sight to see a shepherd at work. And while the job of the shepherd could also call to mind for them the image of a day laborer who maybe cared about the sheep or didn't, you know, someone who, upon seeing a wolf or other predator, might say, y'all ain't paying me enough for this. Peace out. Good luck. Bye-bye, sheep. This is exactly the opposite of who Jesus says he is. He is not the self-serving shepherd or the abusive parent or the grifting caregiver. The person to whom Jesus was comparing himself was the owner or otherwise permanent caretaker of the sheep. Being a shepherd is ground level, in the dirt and dust, back-breaking work. Work that requires strength, work that requires patience, work that requires relationship. Because sheep get out of a hole and then in their fear and confusion can jump right back in it and the shepherd has to go get them all over again. Because sheep need to be led to still water as they die of thirst before drinking from a running stream. Because sheep have little defenses against natural predators and need constant protection, even ones who would and will kill our shepherd, Jesus. So Jesus is a good shepherd, one who 
won't abandon us or berate us or mistreat us, knowing that our reaction to this wide world of change and strangeness will range anywhere from anxiety to impatience to, to grief or to joyful discovery. In naming himself our good shepherd, Jesus is simply describing his love and the power within it. That good shepherd love is the power of his reach being wide enough to hold us all together, even when we're in other flocks. Whether that flock is in person here or the flock that's watching at home or the flock that's not ready to come back or watch on TV yet, but they'll be back when we can sing and have kids. That Good Shepherd love is the power to not only meet us exactly where we are at any moment of this transition to our new normal, but to help us meet one another and ourselves where we each are in patience and compassion and peace. That Good Shepherd love is the power to enable us to, as the children sang last week, draw the circle wide. If you remember St. Gregory the Great back when our bishop, Bishop Wright, was what they used to call a baby bishop, brand spanking new, all his vestments were still shiny. He said that his vision for the diocese was that we draw the circle wider. And that is not always easy nor comfortable. But Jesus, our shepherd, gives us the power to be mindful of and loving toward other flocks because each and every one of us are always, always, always his. To my in-person flock, welcome home. We continue to rejoice in your presence. To my at-home flock, welcome home. We continue to rejoice in your worshiping with us at whatever time that may be. To the flock that is not yet ready to be online or in person. I know you can't see this, but just like Jesus, we are always ready to welcome you home. One shepherd, many flocks, one family. In Jesus, we are all welcomed always into our one forever and loving home. Let us celebrate the good news of God in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
The prayers of the people this evening can be found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your online bulletin. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, we pray for our President Joseph, our Governor Brian, and our Mayor Kelly, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Rob, Don, and Paul, our bishops. For all bishops and other ministers, especially Nikki, our priest, and Christina, our deacon for the clergy and people of St. Mark's Dalton, St. Mark's LaGrange, St. Catherine's Marietta, Cathedral of St. Philip, Cathedral Towers, St. James Marietta, St. James Clayton, for all congregations seeking new or renewed direction, the bishop and the people of our companion and partner, Diocese of Cape Coast, for all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray especially for Joel, Mia, Ellen, Katie, Joe, Tammy, Tom, Timberlane, Thelma, Timberly, Thelma, Carl, Cheryl, Carol, Donna, Rainsley, Mark, Jane, Mac, Marge, Dot, Elena, Doug, Glenn, Pat, Stephanie, Roseanne, Aaron, Stephen, Linda, George, Tina, Connolly, Deborah, Mary, Gail, Kim, Shirley, Jimmy, Jean, Sandy, Shelby, Sarah, Roger, Martha, Jack, Stanley, Cecil, Bill, Sally, Patrick, Diane, Pete, Sophia, Samantha, Jennifer, Chip, and Buddy. Our men and women in the armed forces, especially Patrick, Christopher, Gabrielle, Nathan, Tom, James, and Jonathan. I invite your prayers. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for Jane Hudson, Ian Van Giesen, Olivia Morris, Geneva Preston, Michelle Burnett, Ron Balthasar, Linda Morris, and Susan Rissler, who celebrate their birthdays this week. And for Sarah Gordon and Betty Littleton, Ron Balthasar and Jane Hudson, and Benjamin and Gabrielle Compton, who celebrate their anniversaries this week. I invite your thanksgivings. We exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially Tammy Bowen's mother, Beverly Howard, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. O oh God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that we, who have been raised with him, may abide in his presence and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise forever. Amen. Amen. 
O God, our Heavenly Father, you have blessed us and given us dominion over all the earth. Increase our reverence before the mystery of life and give us new insight into your purposes for the human race and new wisdom and determination, especially in light of the pandemic and all violence in making provision for its future in accordance with your will, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, because of what Christ has done for us, we have peace with God, peace with ourselves, and peace is possible with our neighbor. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with, with you. you. Peace, everybody. Hi, Mom. Please take this moment to offer peace to all those living beings in your household. And if you are with us at the premiere and participating in the chat, please feel free to participate in passing the peace in the chat. And our service will take a moment to give you time to do all that, and we will return in just one moment. Peace be with you. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and our labor to the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give God, God thanks, thanks and praise. praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say. We acclaim you, holy God, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might love and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper, with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We, we praise you, we bless you, we give, give thanks, thanks to you, you and, and we, we pray, pray to you, you Lord, Lord our God. God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation 
the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, matriarchs, and with St. Gregory the Great. And all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past, we praise you in union with them and give you glory through our Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. All honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now together as a family under Christ, our one good shepherd, we are bold to do as Christ has taught us and pray. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. the gifts of God for the people of God. And now let us pray the prayer of spiritual communion. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though we cannot physically consume these gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that we have received the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we embody your desire and be renewed for your service through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The, the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, in the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 664, found in the 1982 hymnal and in our bulletin. Our closing hymn is number 664. into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.